Hello, everyone. Very good morning to you all. And I hope you had a great weekend. In the past, uh, say, uh, past weeks, we have uh, discussed a couple of topics. And we're going to discuss about a new topic today called Groovy. Uh, we, we, all, we had an introduction uh, session in the last week. Uh, but we are going to start the coding now. And we're going to see how it works in our uh, system. Now, before we start with Groovy, let's have a quick recap of what were the topics that we have discussed in the past weeks. So we started off with the SAP overview, wherein we understood the significance of SAP, the enterprise uh, solutions that SAP provides, and um, what, are the, what are the upgrades that we have, the latest features in the, and the versions that we have. And this is what we have discussed in SAP overview. And then we started off with ABAP programming, wherein we discussed where the features that we have in ABAP, the various subtopics that we have. And we also understood about the significance of database, database tables, and how, how they can be created, and views which joins the tables. And then we started off with programming. We created a couple of programs which executes and gives us the reports. Then we have the cross applications concept wherein we discussed about the RFCs, uh, remote function calls, and then ADI, electronic data interchange, and then ALE, application linking and enabling, and IDOCs, the intermediate documents. These are the things that we have discussed and how do we do the mapping of uh, uh, various systems using these techniques is what we have discussed in the cross applications. Then we moved on to the exchange infrastructure. We discussed about the significance of uh, the adapters that we have uh, with the, the entire architecture of XI, obviously, and then the adapters which we can be using and how does the mapping takes place and a uh, few examples on it. And then we started with process integration. In process integration, we discussed about, again, the, the architecture and uh, the various examples of mapping and process orchestration. Uh, similarly, we discussed about what, what are the different topics that we have in, uh, um, in process orchestration. We discussed about all the mappings, different types of mappings that we have here. And we discussed about a couple of business models in which we can make use of this uh, process orchestration concept. And uh, we discussed about the various operation and process monitorings. Then we also discussed about the SLD and NetWeaver Developer Studio. How, how does the NetWeaver Developer Studio, how do we, how can we configure the iFlows uh, basic introduction? And then we now move, move, move on to the cloud platform integration, wherein we use the iFlows exclusively. So in CPI topics, we discussed about what is the integration, uh, in, what is integration platform as a service and types of integration scenarios. What is CPI cloud platform integration adapter supported in uh, SAP CPI, CPI versus the process orchestration, the pre-packed uh, integration content, and then CPI development tools. So in Groovy, we discussed what exactly is Groovy. Features of Groovy, installation of Groovy, and um, uh, we just had an overview of uh, Groovy. And now we're going to discuss how the coding would be in Groovy. And we also understood that uh, Groovy happens to be a superscript of Java. So it means that everything that works in Java will work in Groovy as well. But there are a lot of advanced features in Groovy which might not work, be backward compatible with Java. Now let me start with the Groovy console. A quick uh, start with the Groovy console. Uh, I'm going to um, use a, uh, use a, a Groovy console which is uh, pre-configured here. So I just typed Groovy console in the uh, uh, in the in the Google, and then then I am opening this uh, Groovy console here, and this is actually a kind of a, uh, a simple portal where you can practice it. Uh, 
but the actual Groovy uh, code will be doing in the uh, in, uh, Groovy installed in our system. So let me start off with a couple of uh, couple of examples with which we can understand the uh, Groovy coding, how it works. So if at all, if you would like to display something, just a write statement, the hello world, hello world uh, statement that we normally write, that's what we'll try with. So for that, I'll write print ln and double inverted quotes. And in between double inverted quotes, I write, I write Vikramaditya and then execute the script. And we got the output as Vikramaditya here. And this is just a string that we are, we are typing here. Then uh, we can create a variable and in that variable, you can you can assign some value to the variable and then you can print it. So this happens to be a, a simple uh, output statement, a print statement. Now, if I, if I would like to comment this, there are two ways in commenting. If I have to comment a single line, I can go for the forward slash twice and this get, gets commented. And if at all, if you have to comment in multiple lines, then what we have to do is like, let's say I have another, another one, like print LN. And here I get this as SAP CPI. And now I'll execute this. And I get the output as SAP CPI here. And if I would like to comment both the lines, then we need to start with slash star and here star slash. Now remember when you when you start off with a when you start off with a slash star, you need to end with star slash somewhere down the line. Otherwise, the entire code from there becomes a comment. So this this slash star need to be concluded by uh, star slash. Okay, let us let us now move on and. Uh, uh, define a particular uh, a variable. So I'll go for def a is equals to some one, two, three, four. And then I'll go for print ln. A, and let's execute this and see. And we got the one, two, three, four as the output. Now, during the runtime itself, uh, we can change the properties of the variable. Uh, we can assign another string and uh, we can change the value of that. So let's say uh, I'm giving it as again, A is equals to some string here. Again, I'm writing Vikramaditya. And then I'll go for print. Ln a. So it types Vikramaditya. So this value is, is uh, reassigned. Uh, we are assi reassigning a value. When we are reassigning the value, automatically the properties of it also will change. Going forward, we'll also check how the properties uh, impact the system. So here we can have uh, uh, various values which can type in this particular uh, output. Okay, so now let me get the properties of this. 